you know, one way of thinking about it is if AI breaks a public web, crypto bills a web three of trust. Hello, everybody at uh, Chainlink. Uh, this is Balaji Srinivasan at Balaji S on Twitter. I'm um, going to talk to you today about uh, something that you probably heard in a cliche way a bunch of times, which is AI plus crypto. But, but hopefully we'll go beyond the cliches and actually uh, talk about how AI makes everything fake and crypto makes it real again. So without further ado, um, basically this is the concept, right? You know, obviously you've heard of both these things a ton uh, for the last uh, couple of years. And uh, I think, however, there is a fusion between them, which is that um, generative AI in particular makes it very easy to fake anything online, to generate new things online. Uh, and then how do we verify that? How do we authenticate that? How do we restore scarcity in some sense? Well, that's where crypto comes in. So as I said, there, you know, these two things are often paired in a vague and hand-wavy way. So here are a few very specific areas of technological overlap. Okay, so we'll go through a, a few of these. So, as I said, AI makes it easy to fake, crypto makes it hard again. Here's an example of an arrest photo of Trump that was AI generated. And, you know, what the uh, news is advising you to do is, oh, look at the fingers. Okay, and that works maybe today because um, generative AI images, uh, you know, fingers are difficult to get right because they've got lots of different configurations, but that'll eventually get fixed. And so really the, the fundamental thing here is you want something like, you know, how to verify a message signature on Ethereum. You want to see that these um, images and this content more generally is digitally signed, ideally by uh, an ENS address and uh, or, or something equivalent to that. And, uh, you know, so that you can determine that um, this ENS name um, and really, you know, the Ethereum addresses and the uh, public keys that are associated with that ENS name have uh, generated this content, okay? Um, and so that's, you know, kind of cryptographic verification, cryptographic authentication of who generated something. And, um, you know, this concept of AI generates and crypto authenticates, uh, we kind of have some of this infrastructure built already. If you look at the stuff that's been done with ENS and IPFS, um, if you've got a content hash, then you can go and look something up and you can uh, also map that to an ENS name. And so it would be good to do an example. I was looking around. I hadn't seen somebody do like a clean example, but, it, but it'd be good to do an example of uh, content that was sort of signed in this way. And uh, you could use that to determine if it was AI generated or human generated. And of course, a human could also sign AI generated content, but at least you knew that it was coming from that um, ENS name. And of course, an ENS name doesn't have to be a specific human. It can be an entity like a company's ENS name, um, but but at least you have some uh, origin from where that comes from. And uh, the reason that's important is once you've got an origin, once you've got a citation, AI proselytizes, crypto verifies it. So there's a service called, for example, perplexity.ai, which you know I asked it to tell me about the FTX hack last year. And it gave citations, and that's good. But ideally, what you want is for those citations to be on-chain. Here's the actual on-chain records of the FTX hack itself. And you might say, reasonably, well, only a very small set of things can be proved on-chain. Only financial records can be proved on-chain. I would, uh, And only those things within the crypto ecosystem at that. And I would agree with you. But it's a little bit like saying there wasn't that much internet content or web content in the 90s or the early 2000s. It is actually increasing. And um, you know, one way of thinking about it is if you know, AI breaks a public web, crypto bills a web three of trust where uh, you know, all of the internet has been filling up with um, AI fakes. Maybe Google will be able to handle this. But an alternative to this, uh, when I talk about like web three of trust, if you go and look at an app like interface.social, okay, so this is something where you're starting to see much more um, different kinds of data, many different types of data that are on chain. It's not just financial transactions, it's NFTs, it's social interactions. This is actually a pretty good visual of what, um, you know, a, a web three of trust would look like, where many of the interactions are on chain. Because they're on chain, you can do cryptographic verification of many different aspects of it, both the um, not just an individual action, like seeing that this entity 
uh, you know, signed this content, but all the other actions that that entity did, and you can start to figure out how reliably human or how real that entity is. That's why, you know, kind of the, the web three of trust, uh, you know, phrasing uh, is, is being used. And the reason that's interesting is um, you, you aren't just doing a one-off with like one public key, um, you know, saying that it, it, it signed a piece of content. You're looking at that public key within a web of all the other interactions it's had with lots of other public keys. Um, and that's actually kind of important because, um, because you know, we, we have a, a World Wide Web where right now um, the, the kind of weight that's being put on it in terms of, uh, you know, determining whether content is real or not is, is too much. It's all kind of whether Google's page rank is ranking that page highly or not. And what you're finding is lots of fake stuff is ranking highly. And so you actually want is um, a decentralized Web3 of trust, which anybody can look at, anybody can index, and looking at the on-chain data and, and visualizing it in one of these next-gen block explorers like interface.social, like uh, there's, there's several others that are out there. Um, I think that's that's going to be important. And this shows that other kinds of data can be put on chain and can be verified beyond just financial data. Going a little bit further, um, if we think about what's, what else is happening in terms of faking, um, AI is busting captures. You know, this is a funny little visual of a robot saying, I'm not a robot. Um, but crypto rebuilds them where if you have sign in with Ethereum, you can require a small payment or you can just require a history of payments or a certain staked amount of money or some combination thereof where uh, this becomes harder for something to costlessly fake. Of course, it could still be a robot logging in with Ethereum, but you could charge something for it. And that scarcity is really what we're getting at when you want to try to make spam, you know, costly. Um, another, you know, aspect here, uh, everything I've talked about up to this point is like whether things are fake or real. Uh, but if we somewhat switch gears to whether they're centralized or not, um, AI training typically right now is centralized. Crypto can decentralize it. Now we have, you know, centralized training and centralized models like what OpenAI has done. We have centralized training with decentralized models like Llama 2, which Facebook has released. But ideally, we also want decentralized training and decentralized models. And, you know, for example, a list of the highest crowdfunding projects, if you go and look at them, it's, it's uh, you know, largely crypto. Now, you might not agree with what those projects have done or, or what have you. That's actually kind of immaterial. The point is that huge amounts of money can be harnessed online to crowdfund things with, with crypto. And um, we can potentially use that to train AI. Um, and as, as you train these models, you don't just train them in a decentralized way or a partially decentralized way. When I say decentralized, I mean you know, at least the funding for it is decentralized. You might still have to train them on a centralized cluster, but but people are participating on it. And then the other thing that you could do potentially is uh, right now AI evaluation is centralized. Perhaps we can decentralize that. So, you know, folks have posted stuff about, you know, now they can evaluate Llama 2 on, you know, a, a beefy Mac Studio. This is not that far off from the concept of maybe having everybody um, who goes and trains a model can also go and um, run it on a beefy piece of hardware, similar to running a Solana node or something like that. Um, and what you could do is you could imagine just like there's a new release of Ethereum or Solana and then people update their nodes. You could imagine an updated version of the model and people host it and perhaps every model evaluation costs a little bit of a, of a token, for example, in order to run it. And so those who funded the model get more tokens and then they can you know, pay for model evaluations. This is just, this is just one model. But I think it's something to think about in terms of freeing these things from centralized actors. Finally, people have talked a lot about, you know, AGI and so on and so forth. And I think an implicit background assumption is people are thinking that there'll be a monotheistic AGI. There'll just be like one super intelligence. But it's quite possible that every community, if we can get this concept of decentralized funding and decentralized evaluation working, you can imagine a polytheistic AGI where every community kind of has their own, for lack of a better term, oracle that they ask questions of. And you can say, what would X do for many different values of X? What would George Washington do? What would, you know, Lee Kuan Yew do? Different societies, different communities would have their own, you know, sort of AGI. And they could query it and they could um, ask it for citations and it could even give on-chain citations, which actually pulls together many of the concepts from this talk. So um, that's a concept. Um, just, you know, giving some 
thoughts on how AI and crypto intersect uh, beyond the cliches. Uh, and as I said, AI makes everything easy to fake. Crypto makes it hard to fake again. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.